I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I cannot be defeated and I will not quit. Welcome to Rama Praise, a worldwide broadcast bringing hope, help, and healing for over 20 years from Kenneth Hagen Ministries and Rama Bible Church in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. And now, here are your hosts, Pastors Kenneth and Lynette Hagen. Welcome to Rama Praise. We're here with you today. It's a great day. It's the day the Lord yes. has made. We are all going to rejoice and be glad in That's it. right. Yeah. And we are going to stand on God's promises. That's what I'm talking about today. You know, honey, in order to stand on His promises, though, we have to know what His yeah, promises are. Yeah, we have to are. know what they are. We have to go read the Word of God. That's right. And the Word of God is ever-present there to help you. Yes. It's more than enough, but you've mm -hmm. got to know about it, and then you, you, you have to believe it. That's and right. act on it. That's right. You know, many people say they believe the Word of God, and that's great, but it will not do you any good until you act upon it. Yes. You know, whatever's coming your way, there's an answer in God's Word for you. You know, it's greater than any difficulty that you're ever going to face. Uh, you can always triumph in Christ. Pa the Apostle Paul says that he always leads me in triumphant procession, yes. or he always causes me to triumph in Christ Jesus. And he also said that none of these things move me, regardless right. of what comes. Yes. We can't be moved. And there is no impossibility with God. Stand on His promises and you will see the victory come. So let's go right now where I'm talking about stand on God's sure promises. If you will stand on the Word of God, it will stabilize you and nothing will move you. Stand on God's sure promises. That's the title if you want one. You know, too many people are being moved around like a bouncing ball. They hear this or they see that and first they believe this and now they believe that. Then another person says something different and they say, well, what am I supposed to believe? Believe the Word. Believe the Word. You know, if you want to be steady in a time of crisis, stand on the Word of God. My dad would say it time and time again, and I say it all the time, but I want you to get a hold of it. He, in, in any situation, you ask him about it, he would say, what does the Word say? What does the Word say? I know that many, I see some that traveled on the road with him, and, and you've heard him say it many times. Even maybe you've asked him, and he said, what does the Word say? I've heard him. I, I, can, I can hear his voice in my head saying that right now. What does the Word say? See, God has provided us everything we need to make it through any situation that comes up, a pandemic, any situation that comes up in your life. We can be confident that God's Word will see us through. You know, whatever we need is available in God's Word. You know, the psalmist said, God's word is forever settled. That means it's, it's written in stone. It never changes. It's the same today, yesterday, and forever. You know, God's word is more dependable than anything that you can think about. Now, let's look at a scripture. Matthew 4, 4. I'm going to read from the NLT. I, I like to read sometimes from the NLT because it gives a little better picture of our language. But Jesus told him, that's Satan, no, the scriptures say people do not live by bread alone, by, by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Somebody said, well, I hadn't heard nothing from him. Yeah, you have. If you've read the Bible, this is his word right here. It's coming from his mouth right here, this word. You know, uh, actually, G uh, Jesus is quoting Deuteronomy 3 here as he is tempted in the wilderness. He went on to quote the word two more times. He stood on the word during this temptation period. He quoted the unchanging word of God. 
You know, when I was growing up, and some of you remember this because they sang it in your church too, we sang a song called Standing on the Promises. The first verse goes, Standing on the promises of Christ my King, through eternal ages let his praises ring. Glory in the highest I will shout and sing, standing on the promises of God. Now, if I could sing, I would have sang it, sung it to you. And, uh, you know, sometimes when, when Pastor Tad is preaching, he'll, he'll sing it because he knows how to sing. Now, you don't want me to sing. <laughs> our Mar brother Marvin, our brother Bill, now we sing to ourselves, but not to everybody else. <laughs> you know, but you know what? Instead of standing on the word, too many people are standing around waiting for some manifestation. Thank God for manifestations, and we need those. But if you want to stand true in the face of every situation, stand on the word, whether you see anything or whether you don't, whether there's a manifestation or no manifestation. A manifestation, sometimes people think, well, they say, oh, man, the Spirit of God was really there. Did you see this one shouting and that one fell under the power and so forth and so on? Yeah, I saw that, but that's, that, that's, that's just uh, what, that's the evidence that the power is there, just like you see, you don't see the wind, but you see it, the trees moving, you know, but sometimes the power of God is just as strong or even stronger when you don't see any manifestation whatsoever. See, you can, you can plug into the power of God through the Word of God anywhere, anytime, whether you see it, feel it, or, no, or, or nothing, whatever. The power of God is released when we release the Word of God out of our mouth. That's when the power is released. You know, he's given us word, his word to stand on so that we can triumph and have victory in every circumstance of life. You know, now we've got to learn how to stand on the word in the bad times. Now that's the hardest to do. But Moses told the people, in Exodus 14, 13, don't be afraid, just stand still and watch the Lord rescue you. The Egyptians you see today, you'll never see again. Now these, the children of Israel were in a bad situation. They had the Red Sea in front of them, mountains on every side of them, and here come Pharaoh and all his army coming up behind them to take them down. And uh, what Moses is telling them, stand still and listen to what I say from the word of God, because the word of the Lord came to him and told him, said, tell the people, stand still and watch me work. Quote the word and then stand still and watch him work and quit trying to help him. That's why he told him to stand still and be quiet because, you know, they'll get to thinking, well, what, we could do this and we could do that and we could do the other. Well, if you could, you'd have already done it. So why, why don't you just stand still, shut up, quote the word of God and stand still and watch God move. Come on now. I'm preaching too good and you're too quiet. The word of God. And the word of God is the rock of our salvation. The word of God is our strong tower that we can run to. The word of God is a refuge and a fortress. A fortress is something that can't be taken. It's your protection. He is a ever present, the word of God is ever present in your hour of need to help you and to see you through. The word of God is more than enough. You know, somebody said, well, uh, I need something more. No, you don't. This right here, the word, that's more than enough. You don't have to have some prophetic, somebody give you some prophetic word. Too many people looking for a prophetic word and that's what they get. They get a prophetic word, but it ain't from God. But what I was saying was, now I got everybody's attention, so now what I was saying is that you got all these people with all kinds, oh, this is, this, is the, this is the judgment of God. It's not. 
this is that, or this is this, or this is something else. I'm talking about on the spiritual side. I'm not talking about on the natural side, on the spiritual side. All of these kind of things. Let me tell you what, all it is is exactly what the Word of God said. These kind of things would happen in the last days. So instead of trying to figure out what this, it's judgment or what, no, just go to the Word, find out it's what the Word says, and begin to look up because your redemption draws nigh. Come on now. <laughs> you know, the, the Word of God is greater than any difficulty you'll ever face. God is able to sustain you in every area of your life. He can bring you out of what looks like an impossible situation and bring you to victory. There is no impossibility with God, only with man. The Bible tells us that, Luke 18, 27. When it's impossible with man, it's possible with God. I mean, it tells you right there, we don't have to go any further. The scripture shows us that what God has promised us in his word because of the act of Christ Jesus on that cross over 2,000 years ago on that hill called Golgotha just outside of the city of Jerusalem, he went there, he shed his blood on Calvary's hill to make the word of God what it is. Without his death, burial, and resurrection, the Word of God would not be what it is. But because of that, the Word of God is what it is. He made it a reality. Your, the reality of your salvation, of your protection, of everything for, is because He went to the cross. It all goes back to Jesus. Come on now. See, we have to be fully convinced about the Scripture. Be fully convinced that God is able to do what he said he would do. I believe that. Abraham believed that. Abraham was fully convinced that God would do what he said he would do. You know, Numbers 23, 19 says, God is not a man, so he does not lie. He is not a human, so he does not change his mind. He has never spoken or failed. He has... He, has he ever spoken or failed to act? Has he ever promised and not carried it through? No. No matter what the difficulty, no matter the trial, no matter the situation that you're facing, you can triumph over it and come out victorious all because of the promises of the word of God. Now, you know what? We need to learn how to stand in the promises of God when everything is going good. I was talking about standing on the promise of God when it's bad. But I want to read something here, and it's, and it's, the, la it's the last one, verse 11. I'm going to read Deuteronomy 8, 6 through 11 in the NLT, but it's verse 11 that I want to really zero in on. So obey the commands of the Lord your God by walking in his ways and fearing him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land flowing of flowing streams and pools of water with fountains and springs that gush out of the, in the valleys and the hills. It is a land of wheat and barley, of grapevines, figs, pomegranates, and of, of olive oil and honey. It is a land where food is plentiful and nothing is lacking. It is a land where iron is as common as stone and copper is as abundant in the as a, is abundant in the hills when you have eaten your field be sure to praise the lord your god for the good land he has given you but that is the time to be careful beware that you, that in your plenty you do not you do not forget the lord your god and disobey his commands regulation decrees that i have given you today here God is reminding Israel in all of their good stuff not to forget to do what he had told them to do. It was a great place. They were living in luxury compared to what they were living in over there in the wilderness on the other side of the Jordan. 
They have plenty of food. They have plenty of everything. You know, some people only get in the Word when they get in a crisis. But we've got to consistently stand and stay in the Word in the good times. When no danger is on the horizon, when no trouble is in your way, when there is nothing that is clouding the sky and you're so enjoying yourself, that's a time to stay in the Word. Keep staying in the Word. See, when, there, when trouble arrives, everybody goes to the Word. Everybody starts praying. Anybody ever notice that? I mean, even people that are talking against God, I'm talking about in the natural, on the news and everywhere else, they start talking about God. But see, we need to talk about God even in the good times. When things are going well, when the road is smooth. You know, some people don't understand the, what I call preventive maintenance, a regular maintenance on a vehicle. They never bother to check on their vehicle until something goes wrong. But the truth of the matter is, with regular maintenance, you won't have very many things go wrong to the vehicle. Come on now. Some people never lift the hood unless there's a problem, and then they find out. In fact, years and years ago, we had a young man. He was driving to school, and his car locked up on him, motor locked up, seized up on him, right down there on the old 71st Street before there was any buildings or anything. It's years and years ago. Okay. Come to find out he didn't have any oil in the car. And somebody said, when's the last time you checked the oil? I ain't ever checked the oil. <laughs> now he's wondering why his engine blew up. Some people are like that with the Word of God. How come you haven't checked the Word of God? I don't know. See, every day, be in the Word, in the good times, in the bad times. Actually, what you do with the Word of God in the good times will determine what you will do when the bad times come. <laughs> Little, little funny story here you might be interested in. When a man was visiting another man who lived in an old uh, dilapidated, you know, shack, that means it, it's, it, it ought to be tore down for you young people that don't know what dilapidated means, and I can't even pronounce it. Back in the hills, it began to rain. The roof began, began to, you know, began to leak like a, like a strainer, you know. And... Uh, the guy said, well, why don't you fix your roof so it don't leak? Well, the guy said, when the sun is shining, I don't need to fix it, and when it's raining, I can't fix it. <laughs> That's the way some people are with the Word of God. When everything's going good, they're not reading it. Come on now. We've got to stand on the promises every day. Not just when it's bad, every day. You know, you can't coast along and expect the devil to leave you alone. Because his, he has come to steal, kill, and destroy. We know that. We have to make steadfastly stand on the word of God day in and day out Good times, bad times, and in between times. You know, Galatians 5 1 says this, most of you know it. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty where Christ has made us free. Be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. That's the New King James. Let's see what the NLT says. So Christ has truly set us free. Now make sure that you stay free and don't get tied up again in the slavery of the law. You know, you're going through times of triumph. 
you continue to stand on the word of God. Don't matter. Don't let anything pull you back. Okay? The enemy's favorite time to attack is right after victory. Come on now. How many, how many of you guys now played sports? In high, maybe high school, college. You played sports. I know that our basketball coach, Canville Bible Academy, when I was playing there, after we had beat our rival on Friday night, we went to practice on Monday, and the first thing out of his mouth is said, forget the win. Because everybody, he said, if you don't practice as hard, harder this week then you'll lose on Friday night I don't know how many teams that I've watched and some I've been on have won on Friday night but we lose the next Friday night we won against the team we shouldn't win and we lose against the team that we shouldn't lose on the next Friday night anybody ever been there besides me oh I got some I got some help in here you know why because you were still enjoying the victory and not looking forward to what is in front of you. So we need to keep speaking the word out of our mouth consistently. Remember, always stand on God's promises. They will see you through and you will not be disappointed. But remember, you have to know what they yes. are and to find out what they are, you've got to get into the Holy Word of God. You know, honey, every time I hear standing on the promises, I think, of course, I think of songs. But that's an old, old, old song. <laughs> I <laughs> love it, though, because yeah. it says, standing on the promises, says, I cannot I fail. fail. Though the, the howling storms, storms of doubt and fear assail, fear assail. by the, the living, living Word, Word of God, God I, I shall prevail. prevail. Yes. Standing on the promises, promises of God. God. Of course, we sang those when, when I, you were a child. I was a child growing up. Yes. And, and they, they uh, we sang them so much, I guess they just embedded in our, in our memory. And, you know, honey, uh, when things come that, you know, when people say, well, God speaks to you, yeah. that's a lot of times how he speaks to me is through songs right. and because it brings comfort to my heart or it helps me with an answer. And it's, but it's, you know, sometimes it's the word of God yeah. and sometimes it's a song. You know, we have a great offer this, this month for a gift of $28 or more. You can get my three CDs. Keeping stress from becoming distressed. And we've sure been in stressful <laughs> yes, times, right? been in right. stressful times. <laughs> and you also, How to Turn Your Faith Loose, a little little book by Dad. You know, this That's a really. I, I love this book. Yeah. I remember the first time I, I read this book. Oh, my goodness, it brought so much revelation to me of how I could turn my faith loose. Right. And then his uh, three CDs, Casting Your Cares Upon the Lord. And so they're all there for $28 or more uh, for your gift. Speaking of dad, we have a new deal that we put at rhema.org. Mm -hmm. It's called Timeless Teachings, and it's his, it's his timeless teaching, such as this one as we just talked about, casting your, uh, casting your cares upon the Lord. Mm -hmm. Uh, they're either video or audio, and you can go there. Some people know who, who Kenneth E. Hagin was. He was considered one of the leaders of the charismatic renewal back yes. in the 70s and, and 80s. And he, he had such a unique way of, of, of teaching. Presenting the it truth. Was, it was a simple, almost down-home type of delivery. Uh, one, one person said, you know, I have two doctor's degrees and yet, Brother Hagen breaks the Word of God down so simple yes. that I, I, I just love it. Mm -hmm. it he, he, he had a way of saying it 
where anybody could understand yeah. it. Even 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 children would say mm -hmm. they would like to they like to listen to yeah. him because if they could understand it, he just had that way. And I talked to him one time, and he said, he said, you know, as I study the Word of God. Jesus always made it simple. Simple, that's right. And so, you know, and actually, actually, uh, this, w this week is his birthday. You're right. August yes. the 20th, 1917 yes. is when he came into the world. And he left this world on September the 19th, 2003. Mm -hmm. And, but uh, he, he, he ministered the word coming off the bed of affliction. Uh, his story is great. You might want to go to rhema.org and all the information is there. Yes. So th that's just so much for that. But so many people were asking about him and we had so many people that enjoyed our, we did a, a program here a while back in which we featured him and we did one of those timeless teachings yes. and we had so many inquiries about it. So that's why we started this, That's okay? Right. And we are still enrolling uh, for the fall semester of Rainbow Bible Training College. So you can apply today online at rbtc.org. Yes. Yes. Uh, we're going to have it right here on, on campus. On our campus. Not online, but on, on, on our campus. campus live. live. Yes. That's right. Live. And then Kindle the Flame Women's Conference, September the 24th through the 26th, right here on the Rama campus. So you can go to rama.org org slash KTF and find out all about it. Yes. yes. Thank you for being with us today. And also thank all of you that are helping us to bring hope, hope help, help, and, and healing, healing to, to the, the world. world. Casting all your care, casting all of your concerns, casting all of your anxieties, casting all of your worries upon Him. Now why? Because He cares about you affectionately and He cares for you watchfully. Casting your cares upon the Lord, an encouraging and timely three CD series, plus a slimline book, How to Turn Your Faith Loose, both by Kenneth E. Hagan, and a powerful three CD series by Kenneth W. Hagan, Keeping Stress from Becoming Distress. To stay out of stress and strain, it takes God. Our understanding, our wisdom is very finite, but His is unlimited. The six CDs and Slimline book can be yours for a gift of $28 or more. So call toll-free right now, 888-PRAISE-8, or log on anytime, day or night to order at rhema.org. For Canadian orders, go to rhemacanada.org. Do it today. Thank you for watching Rhema Praise with Kenneth and Lynette Hagan. Kenneth, Lynette, and Rama Bible Training College are committed to reaching the entire world with the gospel of Jesus Christ and training laborers for the end time harvest. If you have prayer requests or would like more information about Rama, please call, write, or visit rama.org. Thank you for being with us today and for your faithful support. And remember, there is hope, help, and healing for a hurting world.